So for the next step is we're just going to prepare the product so that we can have like the cost and which number it has on the keypad. So again, we're just going to make a new class and that's going to be our product class. Now again, just going to make that public and then there we go. And our product will consist of the um, public, I guess, int number. So that's going to be number on the keypad. We will have public in, well, not in string name, because that's going to be what the product is called. We will then have, whoopsie daisy, public in, no, double cost. So that's how much, how much the product will cost. So now that we have these, we can go back to our program and here's where we're going to add a little bit more. So first of all, we're going to do, yeah, we're going to make a private static, is it, should, nah, private const integer. And that's going to be the number of options on our keypad. So that's how many different selections we will have for the products. We'll make a private void, private static void. And that's going to be the um, set, setting up of the vending machine. So this will set up our vending machine and we're just going to call this up here. Now, what we will do here is we will now need an array of products. So basically, because we will have many options, so we will have many of this class. So in here, we'll just make an array. So that's done same way as any other array like of an integer but it's going to be of course of type product and that's going to be our products now we can now assign the size of these products based on the options number now just to explain what a constant is constant is a field that is not modifiable oh well a field that cannot be modified <laughs> there we go um so once I set it to six, it stays six, it doesn't get changed. Now we could technically just make a normal private variable, but yeah. Um, so now we will declare the size of our variable. So that's going to be products and we will put our options number here. Well, uh, there we go, like this. So. So now we're just going to make a for loop and this is where we will add every single product in. So it's going to be, of course, our options number. We can also change that to just have this instead. Now, and what we will change here is because, so I was thinking about how I can lay this out on the keyboard and it doesn't make sense for it to start with a zero. Because if you think about how your keyboard is laid out, well, actually, if you use the right side of the keyboard, it's fine. But yeah, I mainly use the left side of the keyboard. I don't actually use the numpads. So I'd prefer if the options were starting from one. It just makes more sense for me. So what I'll do is I'll change this to a one. And of course, you can have it as however you want. And of course, that will give us a little bit of an error because we start from a one and we still loop the same amount of times. So all I have to do is just add one here and that will fix the eventual problem. So now we loop this amount of times as opposed to one less. So what we'll do here is we will make a new product. So we literally just do what we did with customers. So new product, new keyword, and then product. There we go. And now what we can do is just do that and then assign whatever value we want. But of course we want that to be slightly more randomized. So first of all, new product. What we can assign is the number. So I'm just going to do that. And so that's going to be equal to our I. So that's the number we will click. And then of course, at the end, we will make our product, new product be the same as 
this, but of course we have to do it in reverse, so it's going to be i minus 1, because a list starts from a 0, not from 1, unless you're using a different programming language like Lua. So, uh, and that's going to be equal to the new product. So basically, whatever slot in that array is going to be equal to what we just created in that loop. We have slightly more here because we still have to do the name and we still have to do the cost. But for that, I'm just going to add a little bit more code here to make it randomizable. So here's what we will do. We need to introduce a random. So I'm just going to make int random product generator. I guess, yep. And then, of course, that's how I'll have to return a number. So for now, let's just prepare everything random, random. There we go. So that will generate the random number. And now, let's think how we can do this. Oh, I know. So what I'll do is I'll create two sets of arrays in here. First one's going to be a string, and that's going to be our list of products and that's going to be new string now I could technically just draw this from a file but I haven't included how to do that yet so I'll just do it manually for now and this is a very time consuming thing okay you know what so we'll have our products like cola, uh, crisps, what else they have, tea, coffee uh, milk, <laughs> yeah, that's so weird. Uh, chocolate bars, chocolate bars. How many more do I need? There we go. Um, so for the last two, what can I have? What can I have? What do you have in a vending machine? Oh, this is so hard, harder than programming. <laughs> oh, we can have a cake, I guess, uh, and a sandwich, sure. <laughs> It's not very specific. Uh, <laughs> well, um, return zero. Just, just for now to get rid of the error. So now I'm going to copy this because we need cost. So it's going to be a double. So a list of of costs, I guess. Sure list of costs and then change that to a double and then just put some random values in here for now and then modify them in a second let's have a look let's have a look okay so cola can stay as that crisps i guess could be slightly cheaper let's just make it a 50 a t well, let's make it 75, similar, but coffee, yeah, about 125. Milk, milk is pretty healthy, so it should be pretty cheap. Uh, chocolate bars, oh, no, we already have that number, let's make it something else. Cake, pretty expensive. And a sandwich, let's make it a 170. Okay, so... Now we have our list of products and list of costs. So we're just going to have an ID just, just to find them. And I guess that's what we will random in here. So it's going to be public int guess product ID. Random product. Random product ID. Yeah, let's call it that. And what we'll do here is random product ID. And that's going to be equal to random dot next this time and that's going to be between a zero so what we want to do is of course go in this array zero and eight now if i'm right so this means that it can go between zero and eight and of course our array goes through zero and seven because that would be zero one two three four and it finishes seven but we put eight here because if i'm sh if i think correctly the last number of random is not included, so it's smaller than whatever this value is. I think I could be wrong. I could this could be a, from something else, but there's definitely a a language somewhere where it's this way. Either way, we're gonna get in there. If it's not, and then I'll just have to change that to a seven. But yeah, um, and then of course we want to return this instead. 
So now if we go back to the program, we have to add more to this side of the code. So we've assigned the number and now we will put a new product dot and then of course random product ID because we need to generate the random product and that's going to be new product dot random number generator and that will generate the random product and now that we have this we can assign the cost and we can assign the name so for the cost it's going to be new product dot cost of what is it product oh that's right because they're not public so i'm just going to change them to public so what was it list of costs there we go list of costs and then in here the position of arrays is going to be new product dot random product id now it'll be the exact same thing for the name of course so list of name products and then run the product ID. So with this, we have assigned the number, the cost, the name. And is that everything that we have to assign? Yes, it is. Now that we have that, all we have to do is check if it works. So what I'll do is I'll just make a quick for loop and I'll do console.writeline. We want to loop through these guys dot length. And in the right line, we're just going to print out products I and then I guess let's print their name out and then yeah let's see if how that's gonna work yeah so there we go we have stuff generating although we are generating the same product twice which actually happens on the vending machines a lot so that's fine but that could be changed in slightly further part of the video I'll think about it